and grabs all the other stuff it needs to run the payload. Can I explain that correctly? Roughly? Uh, reverse. If you see something in an exploit that says it's a reverse something, generally what that means is it reverses the connection back out to you. For instance, uh, a lot of payloads, you might do it like a, say, a shell connection where you connect to them. You send them the send packet in the freeway handshake. The problem with this is a lot of people's firewalls are going to block incoming sends to things they don't recognize. However, outgoing sends they might accept. Generally speaking, people configure the egress filtering on a, a firewall to be much weaker than the ingress filtering. So by doing this, you can essentially have the box got exploited, shovel shell back out to you because it's making the connection out. And this will blow through things like that. For instance, let's say there was a web vulnerability and I'm hosting this thing on my web, in my house behind a NAT box. Well, I can use the vulnerability to put the exploit in, and then, even though it's behind NAT, because I'm doing a reverse connection, it's coming back to me. And it can blow right through NAT, and I can get my connection, which is nice. You also see some exploits that have no NX. Essentially, these have ways of working around DEP, data execution prevention. Things that uh, basically mark spots in memory as not execute, so the buffer overflows hopefully will not work. Well, there's other ways around that, which the uh, no NX uh, payloads try to find ways around. <coughs> now, there's a lot of things you can do with Metasploit. So this is a very uh, this is a very brief overview. This is the general <coughs> flow chart, if you will. You set an exploit, you set a payload. You set a target and the associated options. Then you pop a box. Trademark Dave Relic Kennedy. You're never gonna live that one down. Hopefully, sometime you might live down the second maniac. <laughs> Guess there will be a lot of in jokes during my presentation. Uh, that is more than that. That's one thing you can do. There's all sorts of other things you can do with Metasploit. But this is the common uh, things that you just want to throw an exploit in a box and see what sticks. Okay. There's several different ways to interface with the uh, Metasploit framework. First of all is MSF console. That's the main one I'm going to be focusing on. It's very well supported. As a matter of fact, some things, you only really seem to be able to set it in MSF console. There's MSF, but it's not as easy to use as, let's say, the MSF GUI, which I totally misspelled there, typo, and MSF web. Uh, there's also the MSF client, a CLI, the command line interface. Uh, the nice thing about this is you can throw all your options into the command line, so if you want to script it, there's your thing right there. MSF web is probably about the prettiest interface. The nice thing I like about it is it's easy to read the descriptions for what you're about to do, what exploits you're choosing, what payloads you're choosing. Unfortunately, it's also slower and not quite as well supported as MSF console. And finally, there's also MSF GUI. Very pretty interface, but my understanding is it's no longer being maintained. Have they changed anything in that? No, it's not. Neither is really the web interface. Neither is the web's going out too. Web's going out too? And the newest, the newest one that works again now, and 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 the newest one that works again now, few basic MSF uh, console commands. And by the way, all the commands I'll be using, I got a sheet here you can follow along. And the reason I need the sheet is sometimes I forget what I'm typing in too. Anyway, help of course. Oh, anything you can run from the command line, you can run from inside of MSF console. For instance, if you, if you have it running on a Linux box, type in ifconfig and the configuration of your network card will come up. Uh, type in, but besides that, uh, MSF console has its own commands like help, which obviously brings you help. If you can type help and the name of some other command, find more information in that particular command. There's search, for instance, you know part of the name of an exploit, but not with all of it. You can use search to find it. Uh, the set, which allows you to set parameters. There's set G, which is set global. So let's say you're uh, hacking one particular box and you want to keep those same settings for every other box you connect to. Or actually, let's say you're hacking one box, but you want to try different exploits. But using set G, you can set things like the target and the local host to connect back on and have that persistent amongst trying different exploits. With just set, it's only for that one particular uh, connection session. Does that make sense? 
So basically, if you want to do the same, use the same settings for a bunch of different exploits, you use setg for set global. There's also unset and so forth, and I'll talk a little bit about that later. There's show, which basically shows you what options you need to set, or show advanced, which will show you uh, advanced options you can set. Uh, exploit and run, but essentially just tell it, okay, go ahead and fire off this exploit, let's see what happens. You can do a session-l to uh, bring up sessions. So I think just sessions anything, no, sessions and nothing brings up what sessions are currently active. With the, man, the MSF console, essentially you can have multiple sessions with different boxes you've attacked and uh, change between them as you need to. If you want to connect to a particular session, it's session-i1. You can also do session-l-v. Um, it'll actually show the vulnerability that it was used to exploit. Oh, that's nice to know. All right, that is in our slides, so now it's demo time. Uh, and hopefully, if anybody wants to try this, try it on the uh, IPs, the XP IP that uh, Martin gave out earlier. It may or may not work. Now, I'm going to do a few steps that you're not going to have to do. I'm running my VMs locally, just so that I hopefully will have a little more reliability. The password to the Indisec, uh image here is just password. And the reason I'm bringing that up, I just need to find this IP address. I could scan for it just as easily, but I'm not going to. Let's see what we got. Okay, apparently 184, 130. So now I'm going to switch to my backtrack. All right, first I gotta log in with root and root backwards, Tor. That gets me logged in and I'm going to uh, start up X. The only reason I really need X at this point is just to make some things more convenient as far as having multiple windows up. Uh, yeah, I guess I could all between different uh, consoles, but this is just gonna make life a little bit easier and make scrolling easier. How many Linux users do we have? Okay, how many people are uh, using MSF from Windows? Just you, okay. What? Infidel. <laughs> All right, if you're using Backtrack 4, next step you're going to have to do is go ahead and actually get your networking interface up. So to do that, I'm going to go to Etsy, init, D, networking, and tell it to start up. And actually, I want to uh, borrow one of these. All right. After that, I'm going to do an IF config to find out what my IP address is. Now, this is mine, not yours. You all won't be able to connect to it because, in theory, this is our own little standard on the off network on this particular machine's VMware. And so that I have it, I'm going to go ahead and switch back over to here. All right. Now that I've gone that far, and I'm running everything in VMware sessions just to make life easy for me, but this is just easy to be two different boxes. A few other commands I want to cover. Um, MSF Update. This is basically going to go out to the uh, Metasploit servers and pull down the latest exploits, uh, latest version of Interpreter, all these different packages. You do want to do this from time to time because it's a constantly moving target. They're constantly adding new features to the Metasploit framework. But I'm not going to do that right now because I'm not connected to the internet here. And uh, besides, it would take a little too long, especially if all of us did it. So avoid doing that. But I just want to show a little of the commands there. I also mentioned briefly. MSF client. I'm going to put it into less so that I can uh, have it come by one page at a time. Did I do that wrong? By the way, Dave, Martin, Elliot, and Ken, do you know inside of MSF console if there's a way of doing something like the less or more commands? No, there is not. That would be a lovely feature to request. I actually asked for that after you emailed me yesterday. I asked you. Now, it's taken a while to load up the module tree. Eventually, though, it's going to give me a list of options of things I can do. MSF client, like I said, if you want to script stuff, 